We want to welcome Matthew, and then uh, Matthew will be talking about automating uh, using Shiny for CSR generation. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Matthew, and I'm happy to share with you this demo that we've put together with Chris. And so a common question in the industry at the moment is, how can we create CSRs more efficiently? And we think at Idorsia, we have an approach that does this. And we think there are two key steps you need to follow. Firstly, you must prioritize metadata. Creating the define XML up front and using metadata sets you on the path to enable automation down the line. And secondly, can you guess it? Of course you can. You need to build a Shiny app. So to give an overview of what our Shiny app is doing, we begin by ingesting this Adam metadata from Pinnacle 21, and we enter a layer of analysis results metadata on top of this. That metadata is then automatically processed to produce analysis code, which can be executed to generate annotated mock shells, and then further down the line, analysts analysis results data, and CSR outputs. So to dive into the application and see what this looks like in practice, we begin here with a table of contents with all of the outputs that we've defined in a trial. And for each of these outputs, we can drill down and begin to build up specifications to inform how the output should be created. So this is this analysis results metadata that sits on each output and it can be processed to produce the scripts. So leveraging the metadata from Pinnacle, we can build filters, we can enter non-data text that should appear in the outputs, and we can select from a dictionary of variables, the variables that we want to summarize and present in the tables. Here, I'm creating a simple and classic adverse event summary, first by system organ class, and also by preferred term. And for these kind of standard tables, you probably know already what variables you're looking for, but for less common variables, we also integrate the define XML so you can view and look across all of the variables in the study and read up on what you might want to include. Once this is done, we can commit the uh, specifications to a database and we can begin to create some outputs. So here we send off all of this metadata and it gets processed by a SAS web server, which translates it into code, executes the code, and returns to us our annotated mock shell. You can see in green, we have the annotations of the variables and the filters that we've defined. Then later on, as I mentioned, as the Adam data becomes available, we can toggle the mode, return to this, and use the same metadata to generate the actual CSR outputs. And this is the core of the approach that we use, but to facilitate entering this metadata more quickly, we can also leverage standards. So here we can create a new table where we'll import from a dictionary of standard metadata. Here we have a library of all our defined standard templates. And for this example, I'll just select a single demographics table. I'll update the number that I want to use, and I'll pull it down into the study table of contents. And you can see that we brought this output in, and also all of the associated metadata behind it. Now, a very important step here is to check the conformance of this metadata we've imported with what we actually have available to us in the trial. So here we run this diagnostics check, and we see that we've picked up a single variable this age group variable, which the standard table is expecting, but which has not been found in our study level metadata. And there's various approaches you might take to correct this. But here for us, this age group one is a standard variable. So we could go back to Pinnacle 
and inside the pinnacle application, we could drag down this standard variable into our study level metadata. And once we've done that, we can return to the application, synchronize again from Pinnacle, the underlying metadata, return to our output, and again, re-execute the diagnostics to confirm that everything is expected. And we can proceed as before to begin to generate our mock shells and our CSR output. For efficacy outputs, we work in very much the same fashion. We just introduce this extra tab where we can define um, statistical models that are used in multiple outputs across the study. So here we can go through into this new tab. And you can see that for this trial, I have specified two MMRM models using the model building page. And for each of these models, we can see which outputs are currently associated with them. Here we just have a single output linked to this model. And then if we click back, we can see that here I've already entered this metadata with some extra filters and the variable selection, and the resulting model is rendered, and we could toggle between the different MMRM models we've defined. Again, once we're happy with this, we continue as before to send this off. It's executed by SAS, and it returns to us our annotated mock shell. But there'll always be some study-specific outputs that we cannot uh, develop straight away from the application. And so to handle this, we have one further page for entering our non-standard outputs. So here, developers can develop their own additional SAS macros, and they can log them here, and they specify what inputs and what input types are required to execute this code. Again, we can link this to see which outputs are currently using these non-standard outputs. And if we click through, we can see the display as it would be presented to the study programmers to fill this in and use this non-standard output. Another time-saving feature that we like is this tight SAP integration throughout the application. So as well as being able to partition the table of contents by um, common SAP themes, such as here, protocol deviations. We can also, again, in the specifications tab, link every single output to the exact part of the SAP where the output is specified. And once that's done, we can click to actually view the corresponding area of the SAP to make sure that as we build and specify these outputs, they are completely consistent with what's being defined in the SAP. Finally, we've noticed that this metadata that we're collecting is actually tremendously useful for secondary or further purposes. So as a quick example of that, we can show an example where we start to look at the data that sits behind these CSR outputs. So here in the original app, I may be reviewing a vital signs table. So this again is a fairly standard change from baseline vital signs table. But I might want to start looking at the data that's actually coming from the raw atoms and being summarized in this output. And to do that, again, we go back to our specifications. We find the relevant section of the output that we're working with. And we can click to open up a link to a new data review tool. And what's happening here is all this metadata that was used in the first app is now transferred across to our data review tool. So all the filters that were specified are carried over and any variables that we've used in the output are collected and updated in our data view. So here you can see it's changed us to the vital science data set, it's taken the relevant variables, and we can begin to review all of the raw data that's gone into this output. Furthermore, we can build up this view further by adding extra variables to help give context to the variables that we're summarizing, or we can save and view, or we can save and share this view with other team members. And that essentially is how we designed and delivered a phase three trial here at Odorsia earlier this year, using a shiny app as the foundation. 
as well as Chris and myself, there was a third member of the team, John, primary application developer. And uh, at this point, we'd love to take any questions or feedback on uh, this work. You can reach us both here. And uh, thank you.